So I was in the shower, I was cleaning my ass and making all shirts all sparkly, spanking clean. I'm not the funny one, I'm the pretty one. Cock shots. <laughs> <laughs> I just checked myself out. Beatles, music, wine, and then loop up and get on top. The glory hole is like a, a like dick theater. I imagine you're going to do it. Which means your pants had better come off. Mama needs playtime. I do that. Uh, uh, we're not sluts. We just love love. Hello everyone, this is Mrs. Atom, and there is no Mr. Atom today. Uh, Thanks for joining us back here on By the By. We have a very special guest with us, and next up on stage, we have Chastity. Hello everybody. It's such a stripper name. I know, but you know, I'm I'm (laughs) damned no matter what I do in life. Yeah, there we go. All right, so yeah, so we have Chastity on with us today, and we're going to, well, we won't quite skip all the formalities. I will uh, go ahead and reiterate, I know it's been on Twitter a couple of times already, uh, but we do have the next Pendulum Party coming up at Our Secret Spot on February 23rd. So if you are in Sydney and you are curious to play or watch or see anything going on, Come out and join us at our secret spot. February 23rd is the next Pendulum Party. February 7th on Wednesday, the first Wednesday of February. Uh, yeah, Bradford and I are going to be performing at Rule 34, and that's going to be a fun evening. There's a lot of burlesque and different kinds of shows, and I think this one's going to be an extra special one after the holidays. There was a bit of a break for January, so I think everybody's going to come back with a vengeance. So if you want to come out and... Be entertained. Grab some tickets to Rule 34. It's not for the team. No, but it's a lot of fun. Yes, it is. Mm. All right, so we have our drinks. We're ready to go, yeah? Sure. All right, let's do it. (laughs) Uh, So today we're going to, I mean, given the name Chastity should give you a bit of a clue what we're going to talk about, Um, but we're going to talk about dating and challenges with dating but more challenges in the early stages as opposed to overall later. I don't know. We'll see where it goes. But Never know. Yeah. So first of all, let's start by defining dating. Because if you ask 10 different people out there, what is a date? Or how would you define dating? You're going to get 10 different answers. So how do you define it? So I wouldn't have thought that there were that many, you know, ways to interpret it, but I define dating as, you know, going out and spending time getting to know somebody that you have intentions or potential intentions of being intimate with that you may or may not decide to take further, start a relationship or, you know, friend zone or whatever, but those those early stages mm-hmm. um before you're friend zoned or um <laughs> You know, you are actually together as a couple. Mm -hmm. But even, you know, as a couple, you can still go on dates. But dating itself is the getting to know each other process. Okay. To me. Okay. I like that definition. I I tend to agree with you on that one. Um, I know some people define it as as going out like that and and getting to know one another. Uh, Some people, it's just being together. But to me, that's not necessarily a date because you can go out somewhere and be together, but it not be a date date if you're not... I would say focusing on one another as well. I think that, to me, that's kind of the point of a date is to make each other the focus. Um, Some people, you know, would define it as friends with benefits or being exclusive. Some people make that a caveat as well. So there's all kinds of different ways that I've heard it defined from others. And that's, I was just kind of curious as to, you know, how we, how you looked at it, where you're coming from. For me, friends with benefits, I, I would define that separate from dating, like you might go on a date, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you're not dating because, you know, the friends with benefits, that's, to me, the intention behind it is different than the point of dating. Mm -hmm. More just a hookup kind of thing. Yeah. You know, it's, again, you're taking your friendship and uh, doing something with somebody that you're comfortable with as opposed to planning a future with them or a potential future. But again, that's my definition. So serious. I know I am. (laughs) Belt is on. So I guess before we really go too far, we should kind of give people a bit of a background about you. You are a single female. Yes. Yeah. What's a little bit about your dating history? 
Well, it's been pretty sparse for the last few years. Mm-hmm. Um, I've made very brief forays into the dating scene and been turned off by it very quickly. So um, forays mostly, um, there was a couple um, pickups at a bar and a couple attempts to do online dating, Um, none of which really lasted too long or inspired my confidence in in bothering to continue. It was just a a huge turnoff for me. wasn't really meeting um, the right people or anybody that I wanted to continue spending time with. Mm-hmm. So um, it's been a while since I've been truly dating um, more than, you know, a week here and there when I decide to give it another whirl. So when was the last time that you went out on a proper date? A proper date, Lord. Um, that I would define as dating. It was would probably have been three years ago. Mm-hmm. What about just like dinner, drinks? Dinner, drinks. Kind of meeting somebody. Meeting somebody. When you meet people, how do you prefer to get to know them? Well, I'd prefer to get to know them, you know, over drinks and mm-hmm. and uh, and meals because, I mean, I love to eat and I love to drink. But um, most of my recent experiences have been with friends or people that were more solidly in to that friend zone. Mm-hmm. You know, not somebody that... You, you meet with the intention of taking it somewhere. A potential future. Yeah. Yeah. So at that point, you know, you've already, it's already casual enough that it's, I consider it mostly friends hanging out, mm-hmm. um, which based on my definition earlier, <laughs> ruled out the, the dating aspect. Yeah. Um, so to actually meet somebody and go on a date, um, hasn't been for a while, uh, started to make a new foray recently on Tinder, which I finally signed up for, but uh, I got really sick and uh, lost my interest. How long did your foray in Tinder last? Uh, It lasted about 24 hours where I was swiping and, you know, (laughs) getting to know what it was all about, and then I came down with a really bad cold, and uh, during that time was exchanging a few messages with people. And uh, they didn't like that I didn't want to meet them because I had the plague and didn't want to <laughs> infect them. And um, You could be patient zero and infect all the tender know, users I, I, out there. I, I could have been there and seen how far it went, <laughs> but you know, I decided to be a responsible adult. Funny that. And uh, again, after that, I, I just wasn't in the mood for it. Mm-hmm. So I might give it another go in the upcoming weeks, but... Yeah. See if the response is any different. Yeah. Uh, see what if, you find. Yeah. See what the the new batch of uh, <laughs> meetups uh, could ring. Mm-hmm. But so, what are some of the the challenges that you see with early dating? Because there's a few things that that I can see. Um, just you know, as we've been talking and and then looking at other friends of ours that are still in the kind of like. I'm going to say singles dating world as opposed to necessarily couples. But I think a lot of the challenges are similar either way. Um, but what are some of the ones that you see kind of as you're starting to or trying to date and things? Because I know you said that you got frustrated with it for a bit. Right. I mean, it's it's really hard for me to um, make that connection um, in the person. I tend to be kind of shy. Um, I don't go out of my way to make eye That's contact. Shocking. And I know <laughs> And, uh, you know, start up a conversation with, you know, somebody that I'm attracted to. I just, I'm, you know, a little shy that way. So, you know, in person's a little rough. And with the the Tinder, um, the profiles were really, really lacking. Like, there would have a couple pictures, maybe a sentence, if you were lucky, information about them. And it was just a question of why bother? Mm Mm-hmm. And the couple people that you try to engage in conversation, you might get one-liners with, might not. And again, it was the question of why should I bother spending my time or wasting my time with you? Mm -hmm. And it just, I had a hard time finding somebody worth my time. What about dating sites like OkCupid and things like that? Do you get more information from that or have you looked at that? I looked at that ages ago. Um, the last time I was signed up on 
Um, I, I did the eHarmony back in the States, mm-hmm. as well as Match.com and OkCupid. Mm-hmm. So I haven't done any of that since I've been in Australia. But I did do some of those back there. And I, in general, they provide a little bit more information because they make you fill out those ridiculously long profiles. Yeah. Right? But in the end, it doesn't mean anything because they match you with people that you've explicitly you know, said you didn't want to be matched with. You know, you give an age range of, say, 25 to 45, you know, nice broad range, and you look and you're getting 21-year-olds and Mm 55-year-olds. You know, just some of the basic parameters just weren't being met, let alone the actual um, things that you might have in common, which, fair enough, you need to explore that. But. Yeah, and that's one of the, the challenges I would see with, with dating, especially early on, is when you're looking at some of the dating sites, and even Tinder profiles for that matter, anything, any of the websites or apps is is misleading profiles or people or people showing themselves as they aren't really. And you always want to put your best foot forward, but you also need to be sort of true to who you are because, I mean, we've had friends that have met up with people that look nothing like their profile pictures, and that's that's not cool. Right, and you, you should at was, least be, you know, yes, present yourself nicely, but you know, you should still set a reasonable expectation. And a picture from fifteen years ago might not be appropriate. Yes, yes, very true. Yeah, so I think you know, not only just misleading profiles and things like that, um, but like you said, just getting started in the first place and just meeting people and kind of making that initial connection. Um, We've also had a lot of friends, and we see it a lot in the swinger world as well, in, in no-shows. You know, people who you'll set a date with them, and they don't show up, they don't call or text or say that they're not going to be there, and that gets frustrating. And yeah. I imagine that's a lot worse for a single person, is my guess. Yeah, I've got a good friend who has been um, on hitting Tinder and Bumble or whatever one of those other um, dating sites was pretty extensively. And she was telling me her stories, and I was just like, you are not selling me on this <laughs> at all, because there was one meet weekend, you know, we, we met up on a, a Friday night after work for drinks, and she was all excited about her weekend plans. She was going to meet somebody Friday night. She had two or three dates planned on both Saturday and Sunday. Mm-hmm. Come Monday morning, found out that only one of them happened. So okay. that was one for four. That's not um, good odds. Right. And for even having a chance to try. Yeah. And <laughs> two of them didn't even bother sending any you know, messages to cancel. They were just complete no-shows. The Ugh. other one was a last-minute cancellation kind of thing. What's and wrong with the one people? that she did meet was a complete dud that she had the, a terrible time with. Yeah. So, yeah, again... For me, just trying to enter back into online dating and exploring these apps and stuff, it was just, you know, a kick. Mm-hmm. Again, tough to, to talk yeah. yourself into bothering. Yeah. Come on, people. If you're not going to show up, something happens, at least send a message and yes. let them know as soon as you can. Because I'm sure polite. life happens, but come on. It's just polite. Yeah. Yeah. A L- little bit of uh, respect for people and time would be good. So what are, what are some of the things that get in, I'm going to pick on you here for a minute, but what are some things that get in your way in like taking that first step or the second step and like, you know, starting to try dating again, like get back into it a bit and, and try to meet people and like, what are some of the things that kind of get in your way or it doesn't, maybe not you, but you know, you talk to friends of yours. What are some mm-hmm. things that you hear that get in their way? So one of the big things for me, um, is, you know, you're initially shy, you know, fair enough, but you, um, I was raised in, in such a way that, uh, you know, you, you sit back, you, you give more than you take, you know, you don't necessarily go for what you want or what you're attracted to. Um, I don't know how to describe it. It winds up coming down to self-confidence. Like you don't necessarily have the confidence to take action to get what you want. Like if I see attractive guy, like he's out of my league. Mm-hmm. So in person, that's kind of a, a hurdle to get over, um, to actually go for the people that you're attracted to mm-hmm. uh, when it comes to online dating. Because on the flip side, if you don't even try, 
then you're not going to get anywhere. Oh, exactly. But and if they say no, then you're no worse off. Yeah. And those internal yeah. conversations take place yeah. all the time. Um, the problem I have personally with online dating is forming a connection with somebody. If they're not willing to engage you in at least a, you know, icebreaker conversation yeah. to exchange some words to see if they're, again, somebody that you want to bother meeting or spending time with. And if they can even carry a conversation? If they know what punctuation is, you know, if they have <laughs> any kind of grammar, whether or not they speak English, sometimes you just don't know. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, scrolling through pictures, you know, while it's nice, it doesn't tell you anything about them as a person. And um, for me... You need a bit more of a story about someone. Yes, I need yeah. that connection. And so you really have got to, you know, bring me in somehow, Uh um, whether it's something witty that's said or an interest that we share, uh, that's, that's going to get me in a lot quicker than, Hey, want to (laughs) meet? And yeah, so those, those are my, my current challenges with Mm -hmm. meeting people and getting over that initial hump. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I would say, so I've got a list here of things that I've kind of uh, found from people, and and you can chime in when you want and speak to them if you'd like. Um, But I know some of the things that we've found from from talking to others is, and we already touched on it, but that fear of rejection. You know, you were saying if there's a really hot guy that you're interested in, and you're afraid to go up and talk to him because you think, oh, he's not going to be interested in me. But again, if you don't make that step, You'll never get there. And it, and it is about having that confidence. And maybe it's just fake it till you make it. You know, you may not actually feel confident, but just go up and talk to them anyway. And um, But I know a lot of people, it is that that fear of rejection. And it goes both ways, guys, girls, couples even. You know, sometimes, you know, we'll see couples and they're like, oh, they're way too hot for us kind of thing. But, you know, you just kind of have to start a conversation and see where it goes. Fair enough. Uh, the other thing that I hear as well from people is the amount of work or time or expense that goes into dating. And I kind of lump all of those together, work, time, and expense, because dating is a lot of work. I mean, there's no doubt about it. You know, going, th- whether you're online dating, whether you're meeting people out and about, no matter what it is, it's a lot of work. And it, it is time, uh, physically, just trying to mentally deal with all of it. Yeah. Emotionally. I mean, and you know, even the cost can be expensive, although there's always, you know, low cost, cheap, even free things you can do when you meet up with people just to assess whether you even want to continue any kind of relationship or anything like that. But that's a big one that I hear from people is some combination of those. That and, you know, for a place like Sydney, Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of people that are around, yeah. but getting to them or getting to the places to meet up can be a bit of a challenge too. Mm-hmm. So again, that's another expense, both time-wise and money-wise, that can make it kind of a challenge. Um, it's not like being back in the States where you hop in a car and everything's 20 minutes away. So there, there's a general rule in Sydney that I've been told is that you don't cross more than two bridges to meet someone. I don't think I've crossed two bridges yet since coming to Sydney. Oh, yes, you much. have. Well, more than two. Okay, okay. I was that, say, you've crossed two, two but not yeah. more than two. Uh, okay. I know I, I crossed two daily. Because <laughs> there's a fair number that's, of bridges in this area, yes. being a, a harbor city. And yeah. then even as you go like down towards the Shire and wherever, there's, yeah. So, yes, that's what I was always told. As a, a, I'm, I'm hoping it's a jokingly general rule, but hell, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Because we've had, I mean, and I mean, Bradford and I are guilty as well in that, you know, we'll meet people and, and distance is a factor. I mean, that's, there's, it just is. Because I know there's been couples that we've been really interested in, but they might be out West and it's, you know, a 40 minute train ride, but it's still that amount of time and, and and both ways, you know, so one couple has to go or you meet in the middle and depends on what there is in the middle, um, And so we don't mind traveling to meet people, but there are times where you're just like, if you're looking for a serious relationship, that's going to be a problem long term. Well, that and, you know, if I'm going to make that kind of time commitment, I need to establish before we schedule that, that it's worth my time. That you're worth it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if it's within five kilometers, 
I'm going to be more willing to, you know, just meet you on, on less information. Mm-hmm. But if I'm going to, you know, hop on a train and go somewhere, mm-hmm. we need to have some kind of, you know, <laughs> connection because... So what you need to put in your profile is prove that you are train worthy. Yeah. <laughs> Why should I come to you? And trainable, because <laughs> yeah. that, that would also be nice. <laughs> train worthy and trainable. Yes. There we go. We're going to get a profile written for you by the end of the night. Yeah. <laughs> So one of the other challenges that I've heard from people is, um, especially with online dating, and I think there's a bit of a difference. I I think we should talk about this. And I know that it's been brought up before on this podcast uh, when we had the bartender on and her partner. Uh, We had talked about kind of the difference in how we approached online dating and apps and even things like Tinder, which we all know that Tinder is more of a hookup app. Um, but you know, when, when Bradford and I are looking at it, we'd like to have a little bit of chat as well before meeting somebody. It doesn't have to be a lot. It doesn't have to be like months of conversation, but no. at least something to know that you can carry in a conversation that, that you're at least interesting enough, like you said. Um, and when we were talking to her, she's, you know, a fair bit younger than us. And she was saying, well, that, that's how, you know, the people that she hangs around with and, and kind of, I'm going to generalize here and say her generation, that's how they do it is it's more just let's meet up in person first, see if we have a connection and then we can go from there and then, you know, maybe exchange numbers and text and whatever. Um, so it's, it's funny because we're all getting at the same thing. It's just that, you know, she was more apt to meet someone in person first and not waste time texting on her phone. Whereas to me, I would rather text on my phone first before I spend my time meeting in person. And when distance especially comes into play, you know, I can see benefits to, to either way. Yeah. But again, if you're, if you're a little bit further away, I'm definitely going to want some conversation before we, Mm -hmm. before we meet. What about jealousy? Does that ever get you? Early on, or is that more of a later dating thing? Well, that's that's more of a later dating thing because uh, you can't really be jealous if you're just exchanging one-liners. Mm-hmm. Um, jealousy might come into play if you know you actually start to get interested in a person and you find out that they're still dating or you know searching for another person. Um, at that point, for me, jealousy kicks in when you want all of their attention. Mm-hmm. And you hope that they want all of yours. So if they're still looking, you know, I'll probably get a little jealous. But I have to be interested. Where do you draw that line with someone? I don't know. It's completely dependent on, you know, what's, what's going on with them. Um, for me, uh, that's when things start to, to go emotional, right? When okay. you're, you're engaged in the relationship and you want to spend more time. Mm-hmm. So then you become jealous because... You get less time. Um, I guess that's for me. If they're still looking, dating other people, dating other people. You really have to wonder at that point, is this, you know, something for the two of you? Mm -hmm. Or is it just fun? Which, depending on what you're looking for, you know, at that time or with that person, you know, that that makes the difference Mm -hmm. as to whether or not to continue being jealous or to have that conversation to say, where are we going? Mm -hmm. Um, For me... Um, you know, I've, I've had several friends with benefits in the past and there becomes, you know, some jealousy and primarily around, damn it, I don't have anything else going on and my plans were just ruined. That should have been me kind of thing. Gotcha. Okay. So it's less, you know, necessarily about them having other partners or them still looking, Mm -hmm. but you still have some jealousy involved. Right. Even if you're not necessarily jealous of that relationship. It's more jealous of the time that you're not getting attention yes. during. Yeah, but yeah. that's that's for me personally. Uh-huh. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And under those circumstances, you know, those weren't real relationships. Yeah. You know, it wasn't feel like I was being cheated on or anything like that. It is solely a, God damn it, I want... I need somebody to fuck and you're not available. You know, I thought we had plans. Now I have to figure out what to do with myself. What do I do now? Mm -hmm. You know, I I don't have a backup plan immediately available. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's where a lot of my jealousy has been, but that's because I haven't been in a, what I would consider a, you know, dedicated relationship 
in a long time. Mm-hmm. You know, a, a true partner, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you still get jealous. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a natural human emotion. I was just curious yeah, as to how much kind of early on versus later kind of thing. But yeah. No, early on, no, um, not so much. That's, that's not an issue for me. It's not until you're actually engaged. A little more with, committed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so one of the things, and there's several different ways that we can kind of split off with this one, but I think one of the things that we're all guilty of at some point in life, and, and even still sometimes, is setting our standards too high. Um, because it is easy to have this idealistic expectation as to what you want in a partner or partners, and and that, that can be hard for people to measure up to. And it's, it's at some point, you know, you have to kind of take a step back and say, okay, maybe I need to, and, and it can be a physical thing. It can be um, whether it's, it's an emotional thing or how you want someone to behave or act. Everybody has, a, has an idea as to what their partner or partners are going to be. And, and if that bar is set too high, nobody's going to meet it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know for me personally, I've been told that I'm too picky. And do you feel you are? Um not in the definition or the way that they are meaning it. Okay. Um because I think that they're seeing it as I'm I'm too picky. What I'm looking for is um is too high of a standard to, you know, jump in and ask for. Um whereas I'm a little picky because I'm not feeling that that connection to get me started. So for that aspect, yeah, I, I can be picky, but it's because I'm not making that initial connection. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not just going to, you know, jump on somebody because they're available and I'm available if, if I'm not feeling that. What if you just need a good route? You know what? That's what vibrators are for. <laughs> That's what, you know, the friendly benefits are for. Yeah. You know, there's, there's ways around that. So I find it interesting that... Um, you know, if, if we look at our our standards and what we're looking for in a partner or partners over time, it changes. You know, what I wanted 10 years ago is not what I want today. And so that's definitely not a constant for me. And I would say for most people, it's it's not a constant. You know, it's, it's always changing depending on where you are in life and what's going on. And people's perception of what they want will change when they meet the right people, too. Sure. I mean, when, you know, you meet somebody that just fits or that you just connect with, you know, they can take something that you never would have seen yourself doing. For instance, for me, I hate smokers. Mm -hmm. I hate the smell of it. I hate the taste of it. Just the concept of it is disgusting to me. But, um, you know, I've actually dated two, not regular smokers, but they, they still are social smokers. And I was willing to do that in spite of my absolute abhorrence to smoking. Mm -hmm. So again, if the person's right, you know, your standards can shift and your perceptions of what a relationship can be should change and adapt to who you're with, who Mm -hmm. you're meeting and what your needs are at the time. Yeah, I I tend to agree. Um, We've actually, so I'm not sure that I can quantify exactly what it is, but there have been some times at the at OSS at our secret spot, the Swingers Club, recently. I'm not gonna say recently, but I would say in the past year, maybe year and a half or so, since we've been going more regularly, that for Bradford and I, there will be times that one of us, or maybe even both of us, are interested in a couple or someone, and it's not. I'm gonna say our typical. I'm using air quotes here, but our the the typical person or couple that we might go for or might be interested in. Um, You know, if you asked us what the ideal couple would look like and we sketched it out, well, that may not be them. But yet they were really interesting. Something caught our eye. You know, there was some kind of a connection there. And and we really liked them, you know, maybe played with them, maybe not, but just had a really good time. Um, I mean, more than likely we did, but yeah. Um, And and it's interesting because you look at that and, and part of me thinks, is it where we are in life. Is it, you know, an age thing? You know, we're not, not 20 anymore. So not thinking like, Oh, everybody has to be a supermodel kind of thing. Um, but I, I honestly think it's probably more so that we go to 
our secret spot, not with the expectation to hook up with people. We go there, if it happens, it's a bonus, but we go there more to socialize. It's a safe place to be with like-minded people. And we're able to just kind of sit and talk to people and have a good conversation and have that banter and, and make a connection. And again, if there's a connection, then great. You know, we may end up playing with them, but we get to know people a little bit more intimately than if we, and when we still do this, we still meet people online and go out on, on dates and things. Um, but I think there's a little more of an expectation, even though we make it clear, we're not going to hook up on the first date. There's still an expectation that we may hook up later. And some would argue that at the swingers club, there's always an expectation that you're going to hook up. And again, maybe it's because we go so frequently that we don't always have that expectation, but at the same time, it is nice to, you know, if it happens, it happens. And, and we've met some really interesting folks there that are not our, our quote unquote, typical kinds of couples that we would normally go for. Um, and I'm so glad that we have, and that we've engaged with these people. Right. And you raise a good point. You know, you meet so many people that, you know, you would go out of your way to, you know, socialize and meet with that you wouldn't normally because you're, you're in your comfort zone. You yeah. know, you feel safe there. And that's why so many people, the people that they um, meet uh, more organically are at work. They're at their favorite restaurants or bars or through friends is because they are comfortable and they let their guard down. You know, mm -hmm. they don't go in necessarily with these high expectations of, you know, needing to meet somebody to be in a relationship. They're just, they're having fun. Yeah. And that brings down those barriers and it opens you up to more possibilities. Mm -hmm. Through normal avenues and channels, hobbies daily life kinds of things. Right, rather than forcing a connection yeah. because you swiped right. <laughs> right, left, up. You could have swiped up. Yeah, you could have. Yeah. Yeah, I've done that a couple of times accidentally. God damn it. <laughs> trying to see the other pictures. I was pictures. just trying to look yeah. at pictures. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, yeah, I've done that But one. they felt special, so it's okay. I've also swiped left trying to look at pictures, and I was like, damn it, yeah, I, yeah, I can't I go back. Yeah, I lost a couple yeah. Yeah, that way. yeah. Um, I guess one of the, we kind of touched on it earlier, but one of the, the issues that arises is just not being honest with yourself and to your meeting, you know, portraying yourself as somebody that you're not and expecting, you know, a connection that's not there or trying to force it because you don't want to be alone. Mm -hmm. A lot of people feel that they need to be in a relationship or they need to be with somebody and they force things that aren't healthy. Just to be with someone. Just to be yeah. with somebody. Yeah. I've got a good friend like that. Yeah. And yeah. He cannot stand to be alone and he'll be in a bad relationship before he will be alone. Yeah. That's and just not healthy. For me, I'm the opposite. Yeah. I'd rather be alone than be in a bad relationship. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of the drama, all that emotional ups and downs. And at that point, it's mostly downs. Nobody needs to be that depressed, mm -hmm. um, especially when it's inspired by somebody else when you could be happier on your own. So I, I find that, you know, really a, you know problematic when dating is people that are with people that they shouldn't be with. Um, I know I've had a hard time ending relationships in the past that I knew, you know, weren't necessarily good just because um, avoiding the confrontation to yeah. end it. That's, that, that could be a hard thing, yeah. Yeah. But at that point, you know, I just quietly walk away and hope that they uh, realize that I'm gone. Smoke bomb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've left stuff out on the doorstep before. I mean, there's, you know, at some Maybe point. Maybe we should do a podcast on ways that we've all broken up with people. Yeah. That, that could be, that could be an interesting uh, <laughs> series as well. But, yeah, you know, for me, again, I, I'm not a huge fan of drama. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there are some people, though, that they love the ups and downs of relationships and meeting new people and good on them. So, Well, I have to say that's how Bradford is. He, I know. He loves that part. He loves establishing that connection and meeting people and, and that kind of that excitement and that energy of a new relationship. Yeah. Yeah, he's, that's his favorite part, I think, of all of this is, is making that initial connection and, and establishing that relationship. Like, he just feeds off of that energy. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm jealous of him and, you know, the way he goes about it. I've, 
I've, you know, wished for years that I could, you know, mentally adjust and do the same, but... Mm-hmm. That's just not in you. Yeah. It's fine. We're all different. Exactly. I don't enjoy that. It's not that I don't enjoy that part as much. It's just a lot of work. Yes. It's it's a lot of work and a lot of time. And I am so happy for him to do all of that initial, especially all the initial vetting on the the websites and things and just kind of going through people and calling them and, and, you know, these people are interesting or these are not or whatever. I'm more than happy to let him do that. And then I'll come in once he said, these are, these are good people. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I should have him start screening people for me a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. You just need, like, a personal assistant for dating. There we go. Yes, a dating personal assistant. Someone to kind of go through, weed through, and say, these are the good ones for you. Or at least worth a second look. Yeah, exactly. That's what you need. Volunteers? <laughs> yes, if anyone out there would like to be Chastity's um, dating personal assistant, get in touch with us and, and we'll, we'll make this happen. <laughs> Are you ready for the question of the week? I am excited about the question yeah. of the week. When when you sent uh, what it was going to be this yeah. week, I got I got really excited. And and for everybody out there, I did uh I did prep chastity on this one. I at least gave her a heads up on what the question of the week was going to be. I know we like it to be a surprise, but as her first time, I I thought you know it might be a little polite to not completely ambush her. Yes, podcast virgins need a little breaking in. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll break her in easy. Uh, So the question of the week is, what are three physical and three non-physical qualities that would paint a perfect partner for you? And I'm going to let you go first. Okay. Um, Well, let's let's do the physicals back and forth, and then we can do the non-physicals back and forth. All right, let's do it. Um, So I got really excited about these because um, Angela and I were talking, and she had a harder time with the physical and yeah. uh, I had a harder time with the non-physical. So for Which me, is kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, the, the top one is um, somebody who's athletic. Not necessarily a bodybuilder because I don't really find that attractive. But I want somebody who's, who's got some muscle to them. Mm-hmm. You know, it implies to me that they're, they're fit, they're active. They're going to be willing to go out and play with me. You know, I like mm-hmm. to play sports. I like to be active, go hiking, go be outdoors, just do things. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I like to sit and watch around, you know, television as well. But, you know, I, I like to do things. I'm not normally a talker. Mm-hmm. I prefer to do. You know, sit me in front of a dartboard, you know, with drinks. I'm good. Engage me in conversation. Eh. <laughs> Wait, didn't you just have this whole big thing about talking to people and getting to know them? <laughs> I'm much better over chatting than I am in person. Hence the let's get to know each other okay, a little bit, you know, breaking the ice that way. But And there's just something about, you know, holding on to muscles. You know, whether or not you're just Girl. cuddling on the couch or if they pick you up and you're fucking... I mean, you're just... It's just nice, right? So that athletic build is... Is high up there for me. Okay. Okay. They don't have to be completely toned or bodybuilder, but they've got to have something underneath. Please, yeah, take care of yourself. I don't want to break them. I don't want to break them. Okay. So the next thing for me yeah, is. Yeah, you do. You like to break people. No, I don't. I like to bruise them a little. All right. I like Fair to be enough. bruised in return. So, you know, it's a give and exchange. Right. I don't want to be broken either. Okay. <laughs> um, so the next thing for me are their eyes. Mm-hmm. You know, when you meet somebody and you're talking to them in person, um, you want to make sure that there's something there. So for me, seeing that that sparkle, that intelligence, that um, that humor, that joy, you know, when you look in somebody's eyes and you see something there, mm-hmm. I have to see that. You know, you occasionally meet people that they just... They look, for lack of a better term, dead. That there's like that, nobody home. Yeah. They're just vacant. The vacant or they're stare. Angry, yeah. or there's, there's just nothing happy. Mm-hmm. I need that sparkle. And there are so many attractive eyes that you know you can just stare at forever, and that's my my favorite feature mm-hmm. on on somebody, um, to, you know, speak with. Um, the, the third thing for me is going to be their voice. That's an I interesting get one. I lost just listening to some people talk. I get that, but I'm not sure I would have come up with that. No, but 
For instance, the other day I was on the bus, right? Um, there are a couple of Japanese... Did you miss your stop listening to somebody? I did not. I did not. <laughs> but I was listening to this Japanese couple. Um, you know, it was a guy and a girl. And I'll be honest, a lot of the, the Asian voices, particularly women's, bother me. Mm-hmm. They're a little high-pitched. Um, a lot of the, the intonations um, are just... They just annoy me. Girls' voices in general drive me nuts, um, to be perfectly honest. You know, that that pitch just (laughs) kills me. I just want to start strangling. But anyway, um, but his voice, it was just this nice baritone rumble that I could have just listened to him forever. I didn't understand a damn word coming out of his mouth. (laughs) But it doesn't matter. Just keep talking. Keep talking while I fuck you. (laughs) It was just nice. Yeah. And, you know, there are some actors like Vin Diesel. Just, I love listening to him. Um, so just that little bit of rasp, that deeper voice. I just, I just love. Um, a lot of people will go for accents. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's okay. Some are complete turnoffs for me. Uh-huh. There's nothing that I, I absolutely love. But to me, that, that certain tone, that voice, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That's, yeah, like I said, I would not have even thought about voice in a physical quality kind of way. But I get it. I can see absolutely why that would be You can talk me very into just about anything with that right and, voice. Yeah. No, I absolutely get it. Interesting. All right. I'm, I'm contemplating this still. just thinking about yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So for me, my three physical qualities um, are someone who is quick to smile. Like, if you... If you smile, if you are happy, and, and again, you have that positivity. Um, but, yeah, a, a good smile can just make all the difference in the world. And for me, I think that's a very, very important quality um, to have in a partner. Uh, my second one is, and nobody's going to be shocked by this one, <laughs> but a nice ass. I want something to grab onto. Yeah, that goes with that muscle tone that yeah. I was mentioning. It doesn't have to be like, you know, this, like you said, a huge muscular, like bodybuilder kind of ass, but I just want something to hold on to. I don't want it to be a flat, like nothing there kind of thing. Um, yeah, there's just, there's just nothing. Uh, yeah, a nice little ass. I like that. Again, it, it doesn't, I don't care size, whatever, it doesn't matter, but just something that I can grab onto. Uh, that's definitely, definitely high up there for me. And then the other one could be debatable as to whether it is physical or not, but I put it in the physical category, um, is someone who's well-groomed. Okay. I think because, you know, I was... in general. Yeah, because I was thinking about it, and I was like, you know, I don't care if you have a beard or not, but it needs to be, I prefer close-shaven, but at least groomed and and decent. Um, It just, but yeah, I think a well-groomed person, somebody who takes care of themselves, and it... I would even put it in the same category as, like, the, the muscles and the activeness for you. Is it someone who shows that they take care of themselves and they care about how they present themselves? Um, yeah, I just, that that just whole package as far as, you know, your hair is decent. You've, if you have a beard or a mustache or whatever, you're at least reasonably clean-shaven. You know, it's a you, wonder we're friends, Angela. <laughs> Why? Your beard is close-cropped anyway. Today. Um, yeah. Uh, but it's just, you know, and again, somebody who just appears to take care of themselves. Like, that's that's what I like is, is somebody who's well-groomed and presents themselves well. So I would say those are those are my three. Um, but like you said earlier, I think the physical was a lot harder for me to come up with than, than the non-physical. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I came up with a... So the, the first non-physical one I'm going to mention uh-huh. is um, a little weird. Um, okay. When I mentioned it to my flatmate, he he laughed at me, and uh, so uh, but I'm gonna stick with it. All right. So you know it's it's sharing similar food habits. Um, I spend a lot of my time, you know, I like to cook, I like to eat, I like to try new foods, I like to be experimental in what I eat, mm-hmm. and I have a hard time seeing myself with somebody who is really particular. You know, if they're really picky about what they eat or won't eat, you know, you just have a hard time sharing that experience too. Yeah. You know, you, it limits the restaurants you can go to, the types of food that you can eat, 
and it kind of becomes a big downer because that leaves a full, you know, side of the world that I love. Mm-hmm. Like I'll consider myself a foodie in the you know ways of I want it all, um, and I like to try it all. And if you're not able and willing to you know explore that with me, you know that's a lot that we're not going to have in common because you know, that's very important to you. It is. So, yeah. It is. So you need to have that that common connection and interest. and Yeah, because you can yeah. spend a lot of time over a meal. Yeah. And especially if you add cooking to it, too. Mm-hmm. Grocery shopping, if, you know, you're thinking long term. You know, there's there's a lot that revolves around food and diet. Mm-hmm. You know, if you are not sharing the same diet, you know, one person only wants donuts and fatty foods, the other person's trying to be all healthy, one that of you is going to hate well. the other. Yeah, yeah. That, that doesn't work. It does not. <laughs> so, yeah, food habits yeah, I get that. is pretty high up there for me. The second one, which was a definite for me, is open-mindedness. Mm-hmm. You know, not necessarily believing everything, but acknowledging that other people have different viewpoints. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be real for you, but you have to acknowledge that it's real for somebody else. And I think that's important in so many aspects of life. Yeah. Like not just in a, a relationship, partner relationship per se, but in all walks of life. I mean, whether it be work, family, everything, it's, but yeah, I, I agree. That is a very important thing. Yeah. Cause I mean, I've yeah. been with somebody in the past who, um, had very stringent religious views. Mm-hmm. And, you know, spent all his time trying to convert me and tell me that I was going to hell and all these, you know, really ugly things that just no. I mean, it's my way or nothing. Right. And being rude against those that, you know, think that their views are the only views. Mm -hmm. Just no, no. You don't have to, you know, swing to be friends with a swinger. No. You You just have to accept that that's part of who they are. Exactly. Yeah. And be open to that there are other life views. Mm-hmm. So that was that was a second big one for me. The other one I had I had a hard time with. I had a lot of things that, you know, I like in people and would benefit from or that, you know, I enjoy more than others, but did you have a hard time either was it coming up with a third or narrowing it down to a third? I'm more more narrowing it down. Okay. Because they're all, they're all little things. I don't, I don't, I don't, it's all little things or big things in the end. <laughs> you know, it depends on the day of the week. But like being affectionate, showing physical, you mm-hmm. know, affection. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's that's important to me. But you know, I had a hard time with, um, you know, coming up with one thing because was it? There were a couple of other things that I was looking for. Um, I consider myself an enabler. Okay. So I would agree with that. Yeah. So what I was thinking was having that balance, having an instigator to help balance the enabling. So we get something started and I keep it going. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure that's balancing it. <laughs> I know. That's why I was like, it's but more, it doesn't really necessarily it's work. It's more enabling your enabling. Yeah. Because you got to have, okay. you need someone to get well, it started. Well, it initiates the enabling. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so, you know, there are a couple things like that. You know, somebody who's a little more outgoing to kind of balance my shyness. Mm-hmm. You know, things like that. Um, and then there was the more, um, sorry, the more than three. But I had a hard time settling somebody on that Somebody can't third. count. I can't. I can't. So maybe I need an accountant, mathematician, somebody to help me out here. I mean, if you have any references, let me know. Yeah. But, um... Is is that to go along with your uh, dating PA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, just you know, the last item <laughs> you on need a my lot list. Of support in your the world. last <laughs> item on my list was a jack of all trades. <laughs> Somebody who was capable of doing a little bit of everything. Uh-huh. So you know, send Jack my way, and maybe I'll be all set. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. Okay, so for me, my three non physical qualities that would paint a perfect partner for me: a sense of humor. I mean, above anything else, I love somebody who can make me laugh, even if it's bad, punny humor, Bradford. Um, I still like a good sense of humor. Uh, I also like somebody who's easygoing and can roll with the punches. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, to me, it's exhausting to be around somebody who's so uptight and things always have to be just so, I mean, we're all particular in our own ways. 
But when everything has to be a certain way, if you're always on a schedule, if there's, you know, it, it just, if there's no room for give in your daily life, I can't, I can't do that. Um, I, I like to have a, a, a brief outline as to what life is going to be like, and then just kind of see what happens from there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so yeah, anybody who's got every little bit planned out, I can't do that. So I, I definitely really need somebody who's easygoing and can just kind of go with things like that. Um, so to follow along with yeah. that, are you thinking more of a coloring book? To help you fill in the colors or a blank, you know, artist's book to just start drawing and see where it goes. Um, Somewhere in between? I would say somewhere in between because a coloring book is pretty confining. You have a lot of lines in there. I mean, sure, you can go outside the lines, but not by a lot. And a blank canvas is a little too broad for me. So I don't are, know what's between them, but what something about one between. of those connect the dots things? There we go. There we go. <laughs> I can do connect the dots. Color by number, you're really you're really screwed on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not doing that one, but maybe the connect the dots. You can see what kind of uh, yeah. order you actually want to put them in. You yeah. don't have to go in numerical. Yeah, something like that might be better. I think yeah, because it's it's. I don't want it to be like. I don't want a, a life that's so broad that there's no direction whatsoever. But I also can't have every minute kind of set out for me um so yeah definitely somebody that can kind of just go with whatever comes along uh and the third one um I'm gonna uh, kind of along the same lines as the second one uh, about easygoing and, and rolling with the punches my third one is somebody who likes to travel and be active and social yes um, because I'm a very active and social person, and I love to travel, and I need somebody who can do that with me. But again, I don't want to have every minute of a vacation planned out. I get a loose outline and then see what happens from there kind of thing. Um, but I definitely need somebody who is willing to to go out and be social, both locally in a, a daily, a weekly kind of life, and then also... In, in a traveling kind of even just like holidays and get a quick getaways even. It doesn't have to be anything big. Mm-hmm. Um, but that is, is very important to me. And I can already tell you that Bradford's going to be very surprised in my top three. I don't have a touchy person uh-huh. um, because I'm a very, very touchy person. But at the same time, by narrowing it down to three, I can make that happen. I need the other ones more. Yeah. <laughs> Like we can we can get that, but yeah, I, I I need the sense of humor. I need somebody who's easygoing, somebody who's willing to travel and get out and be social and active with me. Uh, again, creating that that kind of that that life and that I'm not. You're building a life. I was gonna say persona is not necessarily the right thing, um, but that environment that's that's what I need. Mm-hmm. So to me, those three things makes a perfect partner for me. Um, and yeah, that was so much easier for me to come up with than physical because physical changes over time. Yeah. And, and like I said, if I get to know somebody and get to know their personality and who they are, then the physical doesn't matter as much, mm-hmm. you know, it's because I get to, you know, don't even see it. Yeah. I get to know you as a person and that's really what matters more so. So, okay. That's all I got. You got anything else? But we, I think we hit the, the key ones that we were looking for. All right. Well, let's wrap it up then. Uh, Okay, so for everyone out there, again, we have the two big events coming up are Rule 34 on February 7th. I should verify that. It's the first Wednesday of February. Um, Where's my good old trusty calendar here? Uh, Yep, February 7th. So Rule 34, come and check us out there. And then also February 23rd on that Friday is the next Pendulum Party. And as always, there are, we have the Sex Ed in the City classes at our secret spot as well. There happens to be one before the Pendulum Party. So if you want a nice, easy introduction, that one's going to be the Giving Good Head. So blowjobs and cock massage. Great way to start off the pendulum and party. That one sells out early. So it does. If you want a spot? Yep, check it out. It, I was gonna say tickets will be on sale probably in the next couple of weeks um, for that one. But just keep an eye on the website and you'll see the the calendar of events for those things. Um, and if you want to get in touch with us, you can find us on 
Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter all have the same handle. It's at By the By Podcast. If you want to check out our website, it's www.bythebuy.com.au. I know it was down for a couple of days. That's being worked on. So if it is down, hang in there. It'll be back up. Don't worry. Uh, and then if you want to email us, you can email us at theatomsoflove at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, feel free to give us any kind of feedback, uh, comments, questions, rude remarks. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you. And thanks, Chastity. Thank you, Angela.